Italy Kilo 5, Yokohama Zulu Zulu. Italy Kilo 5, Yokohama Zulu Zulu. Calling CQDX. All over. Hi and welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, I'll be showing you the RS HFIQ 5W HF SDR transceiver from Hobby PCB. Now the RS HFIQ is an open source project designed to translate I and Q baseband signals to RF in the 80 to 10 meter amateur radio bands. Not only does this receive, but it also transmits with up to five watts of RF power on each band. Now we'll test the power output a bit later in the video. The I and Q signals must be processed by external signal processing software, such as the SDR package called HDSDR. And this is the software that I'll show you today, working with the RSHFIQ. Now this was originally started as a Kickstarter project back in 2016, and it had over 273 backers pledging more than $58,000 to get this project started. The design, however, was actually created back in 2015. Also, you may have heard of Hobby PCB before. They are the same company which designed and manufactured the Hard Rock 50 linear amplifier, which is a popular amplifier to be used with QRP radios. Now, hopefully in the future, I'll feature one of these Hard Rock 50s on the channel. Now, the RSHFIQ has an IQ in, IQ out, and their 3.5 millimeter stereo connections on the front panel, along with a USB connection to connect to your computer. On the rear panel, we find an aux connector, the power in port, an on off switch, and of course the antenna connection, which in this case is a BNC style connector. The RSHFIQ can be purchased as just a populated board, but in this case, I have mine mounted in the supplied aluminum case, which offers great protection. And the main board itself is extremely well laid out and well built. Notice the heat sink on the Class A MOSFET, which is used for the 5 watts RF output. The MOSFET used is actually rated at 16 watts, so there's plenty of margin for tolerance to the SWR and high duty cycle that digital modes need. On the board of the RSHFIQ, you will see an Arduino Nano. Now this is used to interface to your computer and which OmniRig talks to to control things like frequency and power levels. And one of the questions I know you'll be thinking about now is about noise generated from the Arduino. Well, there is none. And the reason for this is because the developers of this board have carefully placed optocouplers in specific locations to isolate various sections of the radio to eliminate computer noise and ground loops. Furthermore, the RF signals are magnetically coupled using signal transformers. Another hot topic for SDR transceivers like the RS HFIQ is filters and how clean is that transmitted signal? Well, the good news is that the RS HFIQ contains a bank of bandpass filters for receive, which covers the entire HF handbands. Now this same bank of filters is also used on transmit along with an additional bank of low pass filters. The low pass filters are placed after the power amplifier to ensure that the transmitted signal exceeds all applicable regulatory requirements. Now connecting the RSHFIQ to the computer is fairly easy. You will however need two 3.5 millimeter stereo patch cables and a USB cable. Now here we can see two high quality audio cables plugged into the IQ in and IQ out ports on the front panel. We'll also have a USB cable, which the other end is plugged into the computer. Now the other end of the audio cables are plugged into my computer's sound card on the line in and line out sockets. We then have a power cable supplying 13.8 volts from my power supply. At this point, I also connected my NFED half wave antenna to the BNC antenna connection on the rear. Now, before we look at how to configure the software, let me briefly talk about the audio cables from the RSHFIQ to the computer. So for this to work correctly, you will need a separate sound card that has a stereo output and a stereo input. Now, there are a few options available on the market, but if you don't already own one, then Hobby PCB recommend the StarTech USB stereo audio adapter. And as well as having a stereo line in, it also supports a sample rate of up to 96 kilohertz. 
This in turn would provide a 96 kilohertz bandwidth on the SDR software. Now in this diagram, we can see the IQ in and IQ out from the RSHF IQ going to the StarTech USB adapter. The headphones and microphone used to drive the audio of the radio is then plugged into the inbuilt sound card of the computer. Hence why you need two sound cards for this to work. So let's take a look at the software needed. If we head over to the software download page of the Hobby PCB website, we'll find the RSHFIQ software zip file. Now download this and then uncompress it. This folder will now contain all of the software needed to start using the HFIQ as an SDR transceiver on your computer. Now if you do not already have it installed, go ahead and install HDSDR from the HDSDR folder. And then install OmniRig from the OmniRig folder. Once these are installed, there are a couple of files that we need to copy from these folders before we run the software. Firstly, open the OmniRig folder again and copy the rshfiq.ini file to the rigs folder within OmniRig's installation folder. Then from the extio folder, we need to copy the extio dll file to the root installation folder of hdsdr. Once these files have been copied successfully, you can now plug in and power on the HFIQ. What we need to do now is configure OmniRig. So within your computer's device manager, look for a newly added COM port, which will be the SDR. In my case, mine is COM port 12. You'll then need to open up OmniRig and set one of the rigs as per the settings shown here, but with your COM port. Once OmniRig is configured, close it and then launch HDSDR. Now once HDSDR is started, we need to configure the sound card options. Click the green sound card button and you should now see a screen like this. The RX input radio will be the second sound card's input and the TX output to radio will be the second sound card's output. TX input from microphone will be your local sound card where you have your microphone plugged in and the RX output to speaker will be your computer speakers. Next, we need to configure the CAT control from options. So here, select Omni rig, rig number that you previously configured. If you're going to use the RSHFIQ to transmit, then you will also need to enable SDRTX support. Lastly, under MISC options, I would also advise you to set your settings the same as I have here. One last setting to change will be the bandwidth. Click the bandwidth button and choose the appropriate input and output bandwidth setting. If your sound card supports 96 kHz, choose 96,000 for the input. We are now ready to click the start button to start receiving on the HFIQ. So we can see the rig control and the receiver is working well with HDSDR. So let's now hook up the HFIQ to my power meter and let's check the RF power measurements for each of the bands. So for this test, I will set the output power level to maximum and then use the signal generator built into HDSDR. Now first up, we will try the 80 meter band on 3.7 megahertz on lower sideband. And here we can see an output of around five and a half watts. Next, we move up to the 40 meter band on 7.1 megahertz. And here we're seeing an output of just over five watts. As we move up to the 30 meter band on 10.125 megahertz, we see an output of just over eight watts. Our next up is the 20 meter band on 14.2 megahertz. And here we see an RF output of just over five and a half watts. On the 17 meter band at 18.150 megahertz, we see an output of 7.5 watts. 
Now, as we move further up to the 15 meter band on 21.254 megahertz, we see an RF output of 8 watts. And on 10 meters at 28.450 megahertz, we see an RF output of just over 8 watts. Now, as mentioned previously with this test, I was using the internal signal generator of HDSDR at maximum power and maximum modulation. So here we was driving the HFIQ pretty much to its limits. With normal SSB voice modulation, we would probably see more close to 5 watts, depending on how you set up your microphone audio chain with compression and limiters, for example. It may be worth remembering these output results if you're going to be using external amplifier, especially with digital modes. Now, if you're interested in purchasing one of the RSHFIQ SDR transceivers, then head over to hobbypcb.com. I'll leave a link down below and get your order in as I expect that they will sell pretty quickly now. If you already own one of these, I would be most interested to know your thoughts. So please leave them down in the comments below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then you'll definitely want to watch my next video on this SDR radio, as I'll be showing you this. Now, this device is manufactured by a ham radio operator based in Athens, Greece, and this allows you to connect the RS HFIQ with power SDR over your Ethernet network without the requirement for a second sound card. Until the next video, take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.